Hello, hello. Those of you who are local in the South Norfolk area on Thursdays at 5 o'clock, there is a food pantry here. I have the address in the link at the end of the message and there's good food that they that they're giving out so if anybody's in need of food or knows somebody that is in need of food feel free to come out here in the building to St. Luke's Church on 1200 Point Dexter Road in South Norfolk it's actually in the thrift store they've laid out tables so feel free to come on down and enjoy some good food especially the people of God every little bit helps well today I want to continue the journey of learning about the kingdom of God that we are living in as believers and I want to tell you, if I'm not careful, I can be overwhelmed with so much that I'm seeing in the Word. Not what I'm hearing from people, because I'm not hearing it from anybody except Miles Monroe, Old Tapes, and currently Pedro Adeo. But I'm here to tell you, I am going through the Bible myself. I am in Matthew, I've already gone through every place in the Gospels, every place where the kingdom was mentioned in the New Testament, and I've examined it, and I've noticed that indeed the message that Jesus preached was about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, and I am so amazed that I have missed this all these years. Now I understood a closeness to Christ. I understood pressing in in the spirit and I've been doing that. But to miss my position in the kingdom, not understanding it. God said in Hosea, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And I'm telling you, in so many areas of my life, I see the struggles and the lack because of my ignorance of my stand as a kingdom citizen of the king of all kings and lord of all lords. And the fact that Jesus himself came to earth to bring the kingdom, to extend it to earth, to make us understand our positions in the kingdom as kingdom citizens. I do not know how I missed it, but here I am on this journey. And I apologize to you for everything that I have preached. I've preached it from my heart. I've preached it from my understanding. But now my understanding has amped up. My understanding has been enlightened. And so I'm bringing you along with me on this journey, this most amazing journey, this authentic journey of the kingdom of God to understand whose we are, to understand because of whose we are, our identity as kingdom citizens, to understand that the struggles that we experience here on earth is because we are trying to live a dual citizenship. Citizenship of earth and citizenship of heaven. And there is no dual citizenship in heaven. You're either in or you're not. You're either in or you're not. And so by holding on to the things of the earth, by trying to mix them with the things of heaven, we have been defeated. He said we are more than conquerors. Not just conquerors, but more than conquerors because of Christ. And yet, we live in a day when we're not seeing the miracles in the church. We live in the day when our children are rebellious. We live in a day when we are struggling to pay bills. 
we live in a day when the kingdom of darkness is blatantly showing itself and abounding and we don't understand our position as kingdom kids and Jesus showed it oh my goodness so I'm coming along on this journey I'm bringing you along last Thursday I talked about co-ruling as royalty in the kingdom of heaven while we're here on this earth and I want to tell you and I always knew this because I could see it in Revelation 21 we're not a go we're not gonna live in heaven floating about on clouds no we're going to occupy earth we're going to occupy a new earth there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Read Revelation 21. I fully understood that. And a lot of you, you need to understand that what you're called for, that's going to be your position in the new kingdom. If you're doing your job well right now, learning it well, being faithful, you're preparing for the new earth. Amen. So let me pray before I begin today's message. Father, King of kings and Lord of lords, I give you thanks for your patience with me. I give you thanks for your goodness. I give you thanks for your love for me to keep me all this time and now to bring me to a place of understanding Holy Spirit may the words out of my mouth be the words from the very book the very oracles of God may the truth penetrate the hearts of the hearers may they have a desire for you, a desire for truth. May the truth not be suppressed in unrighteousness any longer. May we rise up, rise up to the glory that you've given to us because of your blood, because of your love, because of your plans and your purposes for man before the foundations of the earth. Spirit of the living God, let your anointing rest upon me now to speak through me. Let your word go forth and do what you will. Accomplish what you will. God, turn the hearts of man. Cycle back us around to you, to the truth. May we rise up in your glory in these last days that we don't miss out that marvelous part of that great revival going on right now in the earth thank you king of kings and lords of lords thank you thank you holy spirit of the living god and jesus we bless you for your passion that made it all possible thank you in Jesus' name, amen. So last week, I said that we must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. We're born on earth by the water. A baby surrounded in the womb by a water sack. We're born in the earth. But... Because of Adam's sin, because we were born from Adam's loins, all the way from Adam, we came, and we came with that sin, and because of that sin, in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, we must be born again of the Spirit. We must 
be born again of the Spirit. So we who dwell on the earth have to have two births in order to experience the kingdom of God right here on the earth now and in the end when he comes back and takes up rule. When Adam was birthed, it was God's will. Actually, he was created from the dust. The only human that was created from the dust. And God's purpose before the foundations of the world, God's purpose before Adam was born, and we see it in Genesis 1, God's purpose was to give Adam dominion, to cause Adam to have dominion over the earth, to cause Adam to rule the earth by God's kingdom principles. But Adam, in disobedience, Adam, in disregarding God's law, He was kicked out of the garden and we lost that opportunity to reign on earth. But it's not all bad because we saw from that indeed that we have choice. No man will enter into heaven without choosing God. It's it, it, no, I, I wanted to say it's like a bride, but it's not like a bride. It is a bride. It is that bride that goes up to the altar and say, I do. The bride has to say, I do, before the unity can be legal. The groom has already said, I do. He did it from the foundation, before the foundations of the earth. He said, I do. That was the plan. And we see him enacting it on earth when he came, showed us how to live for three and a half years, explained, taught, preached, demonstrated the kingdom for three and a half years, and then paid the price for the sin that Adam caused. He paid that price for us to enter back into God's kingdom but we have to do it by choice we have to choose Christ Christ is the door into the kingdom what Christ did on the cross paid the price for us to enter into the kingdom so we enter through the door Jesus Jesus is the door he said it himself John 10, 7 and 9, he said, I am the door. By me, men enter. So when we come to Christ, when we believe God's plan for humanity before the foundations of the earth to bring them back into his kingdom, when we receive that, then immediately we come through the door of Christ. And the kingdom of God enters us as we enter into the kingdom. It's a supernatural effect. We enter through the door, Jesus, and the kingdom enters into us. And we become spiritual beings hooked up to God, lock, stock, and barrel. We become his property. And I am so sorry that the teaching is not out there. I didn't get it. I had to struggle through learning myself from the Bible to understand my position. And still, I took a lot of what people said and ran with that. And they never taught me about the kingdom. So here I am finding it out for myself, which is a good way to learn. When you find things out for yourself, you retain it better. God said in Proverbs, it is the, the 
glory of the king to, re to, to hide, to conceal a matter. And then it's the glory of us to search it out. And if you look at Jesus when he was speaking to the people who were not his disciples, he spoke to them in parables. He spoke to them in mysterious stories. Why? The kingdom, the kingdom is not obtained freely. Salvation is free, but at, after that point, it'll cost you everything, your entire life to move forward. And a lot of us, we come to the door, Jesus, and that's where we are. We never move forward into the kingdom. We never allow the kingdom to work and stir up on the inside of us. And so it's like an acorn sitting dormant. And in that acorn is a mighty oak tree with billions of other potential of other trees coming forth. But there's the acorn sitting dormant achieving nothing of its potential that's how we have been as christians not walking in our potential not understanding the truth and one of the main reasons why is because most of us grew up in a society that was ruled by a group of men who said we were too ignorant to read the bible and so they, a few men, read the Bible and interpreted the Bible for us. It was illegal for us to get into the Bible and read it. And for some reason, that prevails over us like it's too hard to read the Bible. And as a result, we've listened to the lies they told us. We've listened to the untruths. We've listened to the half-truths. And we've believed it for years and years and years. And there are a few men who woke up and found out the truth. But still, unless you get to the truth yourself, unless you desire it, the Bible says, seek, seek, and you will find. The Bible says, knock, and the door shall be opened. Ask, and it shall be given. God said, those who seek me diligently will find me. We have to want him. We have to go after him. And it's bringing a, 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 a thought to my mind because I remember hearing it preached by Miles Monroe, a story that I know and it makes so much sense. When Jesus was resurrected, there were two disciples walking the road of Emmaus going home. And Jesus joined them. And as he joined them, he began to ask them, well, what's all the hubbub? And they were like, what? You don't know what's happened? They said that Jesus who was killed was resurrected. And he began to teach them, to tell them the story of himself without them knowing it was about him at that time. Beginning from Moses all the way through to the prophets, he told them about himself. And as they reached where they were supposed to go, he kept going. And they constrained him. They pleaded with him, no, no. Come with us. And that's how we have to be. He's going to go his way until we call to him with a heart that is sincere. And he came in and ate with them. And as he broke the bread, he revealed himself. And they were like, oh, did not our hearts burn when he was speaking to us. And my heart is burning right now as I speak the word of God. We have to hunger 
and not just be too lazy. And that brings me to another scripture. The scriptures in the Old Testament makes reference so much to make us see and understand it was a shadow of the things that was to come from Moses to all through to the prophets, the law and the prophets. They all spoke about Jesus and about how the kingdom is to operate. So <clears throat> I'm seeing a, a picture of in the Song of Solomon when the bride, her lover came to the door and she could smell his perfume and it said her bowels was moved and you who are in love, you understand that feeling on the inside when you love someone. But it said, she said, should I get out of my bed and put my robe back on? In other words, I don't want to make the effort. Yeah, I love him. I want to see him. But I don't want to make the effort to get up. I'm comfortable where I am. And that's how we have been as lovers of the Lord. We have not been faithful and true. And he's not going to hang around and just give us and feed us. No, we've got to desire it. We've got to want it. We've got to say, I do. So I'm praying and decreeing and declaring with all that I have as the, the authority given to me that there will be a, a, a desire created over the people of God for him to love him, to understand him. It's like a, a husband and wife who've been married for a while and they just get used to just living there and they've given up on on reaching out and, and loving each other and, and they've given up on just just making the effort. They just go along with each other, not living in that purpose of marriage that God wants them to have all the way to the end. We are the bride. He is the groom. That's the final step in this process. When we'll be married, so to speak, and then our marriage will be consummated. So I've said all this to tell you that it's time for a change in our minds. This is where it all is. We've got to, that's why he said, renew your mind. Renew your mind. Our minds have got to be the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2 tells us we have the mind of Christ. But again, we've been too lazy like Adam. Spiritually lazy. Why was the serpent speaking to his wife. God give Adam the decrees and the decorations before Eve was formed. He had to pass it on to Eve. He knew the truth, but he still chose not to follow the truth. And we shouldn't be too hard on him because we're doing the same. We're the old man. And I've never seen such blame around us. Today, as I dealt with my students, I had to keep reminding them, be responsible. No, I didn't say that. I didn't do that. Yes, you did. And all that carrying on is not going to change my mind of what I heard and saw your lips move and said. Take responsibility. Adam said, that woman that you give me, she made me do it. Eve said, that snake, he made me do it. The serpent was the only one that had sense enough not to cast blame. Lucifer lived with God as one of the highest angels. He knows the deal better than we do of heaven. 
So we've got to stop casting blame. It's my mom. She didn't love me enough. It's my father. He was in jail. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. We've got to stop all that. Stop casting blame as the old man living outside of the kingdom. And we've got to enter through Jesus, receive the kingdom in us, and allow the Holy Spirit to activate as we read God's manual, God's love letter, God's laws and decrees, and how the kingdom operates. It's time. It's serious times we live in. Very serious times. So we enter that kingdom. And as we enter that kingdom, the kingdom enters inside of us. Jesus said himself, the kingdom is within us. The kingdom of God is within us. It's in us. And we looked at those scriptures. I hope you copied it down last week because I'm not going to go over them right now. I gave them to you last week. I told you we enter this kingdom. This kingdom is a real country. It's an unseen one. It's a spiritual one. But it's as real as can be. It's ruled by the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, whose headquarters is heaven. And you've got to understand, find a book to make you understand how a kingdom operates. I said Miles Monroe is a good go-to. Listen to his videos about kingdom rule. Read his books about the kingdom rule. A kingdom is ruled from afar and extends its rule to colonies. So the kingdom of heaven is extended to earth. Earth is heaven's colony. When Jesus came, he let them know, first, you've got to repent. In other words, you've got to change the way you're thinking. And oh, we saw so much. I'm not going to go into all of it. The fact that when he said that, it was at the point when John the Baptist, the one who the Old Testament closed off and said he will come and prepare the way for this king who's coming to rule on the throne of David forever. When John came and decreed and declared the kingdom is at hand, the moment that he got put in prison, the moment that he was set for death, Jesus took over. Jesus took over and the New Testament was closed. The old dispensation, the way things were done, was now closed and a new era began. The sovereign God rules the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven has extended to earth. Earth is being colonized by the kingdom of heaven. Jesus was that first that came to bring that kingdom back that Adam lost. When Jesus came, he began to open the kingdom beginning with his disciples. And that's why he said the kingdom of heaven is expanding because more and more, he said in John chapter 10 and John chapter 17, there are many more to come into the kingdom. So the kingdom is expanding, but the way to that kingdom is very narrow and very few find it. And it's only through the door, Jesus. Once we enter the kingdom and the kingdom enters us, we become no more citizens of earth. We become pilgrims passing through. We become strangers to earth. Our rules are no longer bound to laws, we, to earth. The laws of the kingdom are superior, higher than the laws of the earth. 
when we follow the laws of the kingdom, will satisfy the laws of the earth. The laws of the earth are inferior to the laws of the kingdom. So we're royal citizens, but we have a three-part identity we talked about. We're sons. We have sonship. We're a royal priesthood, too. And three, we're servants. We have that three-part role. And the second part, royal priesthood, is dual. Our authority is as kings and priests. Physical and spiritual rule. And then we're servants to serve the king. When we entered the kingdom and the kingdom entered into us, we give up every right that we have. And this is the part that Americans do not understand. Today, this is Black History Month. So the kids at our school watched a video today of a young girl. I can't remember her name. Ian, well, her name is, her first name is Ayanna. Ayanna, who she lived in a place in the south where you couldn't go to the restaurant. Blacks and whites couldn't be in the same restaurant. Of course, couldn't drink from the same fountain. And she went with some of her peers on a field trip to New York. And she was amazed to see blacks and whites co coexisting, drinking from the same fountain. So when she went back, they wanted to know why can't it happen here? I think they were in Oklahoma. And it said that they were taught to peacefully demonstrate, to go do sit-ins in these restaurants and to sit there and come back the next day and sit there till they close and sit there because they were going to do it until they were served. They said some of the restauranteurs pulled out the chairs and they didn't care. They went and they stood there at those tables until they were served. But they had to do it peacefully. They were trained. If they throw food in your face, if they spit in your face, you are not to respond. You think our kids can do that this day? They don't have the training, the discipline. And that's why we're so far from God. We have our own rights. No, you're not throwing that in my face. No, you're not doing this. No, you're not doing that. Those young girls, young boys, were able to cause those restaurants to serve them as black people because they were able to discipline themselves to do the right thing. When we get into the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of heaven comes into us, we are no more our own. We are bought with a price. We need to glorify God with our bodies, with our minds, with our thoughts. Everything about us is now ruled by the king. We're his property. And the thing about a kingdom the king takes care of his citizens, gives them all the things that they have need of. And we're not talking about slavery. That's a poor, poor example of kingdom living. A very poor example because those slaves were beaten and mistreated and even denied the right, the basic rights to read the basic rights to, to have a family. No, that is not kingdom living. Slavery is not kingdom living. When we say we're slaves to God, that's not what we mean. That is not the example at all. The example is Jesus. He showed us all three. When he got baptized, and filled with the Spirit, 
at the age of 30, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness, drove him into the wilderness. He had no choice. That is servanthood. You do what the king says. We see in the garden, he said to God, isn't there any other way? Do I have to go to the cross? It was so traumatic for him that it said he, he sweated his drops of blood. And what did he say? And it's a good word for us to memorize and use. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. It's a wonderful word. That's what slaves say. I'm not, again, I'm not talking about the slaves of America, the slaves of the world. I'm talking about the slaves to Christ, the slaves to God. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So as royal citizens, as sons, as servants, we give all of our rights up. We have no more rights. If God says jump, the only thing you need to say is how high and when. And maybe not even that because that's probably too mouthy. And then the kingdom not only have us, as its citizens, it has a covenant. It has a constitution and principles, laws, edicts. And it has an army. And that army, I told you, are the angels. Two-thirds of the angels did not leave heaven and go after the devil to serve him. Those are God's ministers, God's army. We, his children, his sons, his daughters, his royal priesthood, his servants, his slaves are not the army. The army are the angels. So we talked about the fact that heaven is God's throne and the earth is is his footstool and the earth is the colony of heaven and there are things listen there is no prime minister ruling it's a king there's no president it's a king there's no governor it's a king now we who are under him become the the governor generals but no, it's a king of kings and lord of lords, is the ancient of days, is the judge, the lawgiver, the highest heavenly judge who rules the kingdom of heaven, which extends to earth as a colony. It's a kingdom that cannot be moved. This kingdom, you cannot overthrow the king. You cannot take him to court over his taxes. You cannot do all that stuff to him. He is the king of kings and the lords of lords. His throne is forever. His kingdom is superior over all other kingdoms. His kingdom is a kingdom of light swallowing up all darkness. The church, which is used in the old, in the sorry, in the New Testament, a Greek word ecclesia, is a gathering of God's citizens. It's an expansion of the kingdom of heaven to colonize earth for the King of Kings and the Lords of Lords. That was Adam's job. He lost it. Christ came on earth to bring that rule back and so today I want to talk about the covenant of this kingdom the covenant of this kingdom a covenant 
And we've got to hear this because this, this is going to tell us whose we are, who we are. This is going to give us our position and authority over the kingdom of darkness. A covenant is a relationship between two partners that makes a binding promise to each other, except in this heavenly kingdom, the Hebrew word is berit. In this agreement, this it says a constitution and ordinance of monarchs and subjects, a divine ordinance with signs or pledges, covenant of the kingdom of heaven, also called the kingdom of God, is binding and forever, and it's not made with the citizen's input. No. This covenant is a one-way covenant. It's made by God, and it's never going to be broken. It's a covenant that he made. It's binding and forever. All we have to do is to say we agree. We did not make this covenant. We only agree with the covenant of the kingdom of heaven. This covenant has two main parts to it. It's a covenant in his blood. And the covenant is sealed by the earnest of the Holy Spirit. Two things. We had nothing to do with that covenant except to say, I do. And I'm so glad because we saw how Adam messed up. So we don't want a covenant with our King of Kings and Lord of Lords that can be messed up. This covenant is everlasting. It's only made by God. And we only have to agree to it, to be a part of it. It's a covenant in blood. In Leviticus 17, 11, it says, the life of the flesh is in the blood. And that blood makes an atonement. Atonement means it covers over. It atones for the sin that the person makes, legal rights. So back in the day, when they made covenants, see, it was a shadow of what was to come. And that's why God said, pour, pour the blood out. You can't drink that blood. You can't mess with the blood. Even back then, a woman, when she was in her menstruals, could not be around anybody else, couldn't have sex because that blood was protected. It was showing how important that blood was as a covenant. So it, may, it in the Old Testament, all they could do was use bloods of goats and that. But when God made the covenant with us, he made it with the blood of Jesus. It says in Hebrews 13, 20, the great shepherd of the sheep, he made a covenant with us through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Through the blood of the everlasting covenant. It's different. Jesus, that's what Jesus himself said when they were doing that last supper and he took the cup. He said, this cup is a testament in my blood, which is shed for you. This blood, his blood, is a cup in the New Testament. The Old Testament was shut where bloods of goats and animals, that's why we don't sacrifice animals anymore because his blood was once for all. And without blood, there is no remission of sin. And that's why he said, I will not drink this again with you, the vine, the, the fruit of the vine, until I come 
with you into my Father's kingdom. That last day when we get together at the marriage supper of the Lamb in the kingdom. When God takes up rule fully, then he'll drink the wine with us again. So, the covenant God made is made in the blood. And it's, it's not anything to do with us. We only have to say, I do. And then, the second part is that that was sealed with the earnest of the Holy Spirit. And you got to understand, most of you who know real estate or who've bought a house, you know what earnest is. It's the Greek, arabon, pardon my Greek, arabon, it's arabon. And it's money which in purchase is given as a pledge or a down payment until the full amount is paid. That's what an earnest is. So imagine the Holy Spirit, when, as soon as we enter that door of Jesus, we're given the Holy Spirit, that down payment of our future, what we're going to have in the future, that fullness in the future. It says in 2 Corinthians 1, 21 to 22, now he which establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who has also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Ephesians 1, 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14 of Ephesians 1, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So our king, king of kings, lords of lords, made a covenant with us. We did not do anything to make up that covenant. He made the covenant in his blood and sealed the covenant by the earnest of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So I want you to get a picture of this covenant. Get a picture of this kingdom living. That's why there's no excuse. I can't help it. I can't. Yeah, you can. Because in you is the hope of glory. In you is the kingdom of heaven. In you is the power over every principality, every power of darkness. In you. Is Christ your hope of glory? Yes, you can and you must. Next week, I'm going to talk about the principles of the kingdom. And I'm going to show you how many are going to be thrown out for not following the principles of the kingdom. Many are going to be thrown out of the kingdom and it's not going to be any excuse. Oh, well, God understands. You're talking about the wrong God. Yes, God understands. God, your, The God you serve, Satan, understands. But not the God in heaven. Not after all that he did. Not after he gave his life. And what he went through. The plucking of his beard. The spitting on him, the smack in his face, the laughing at him, the mocking at him, putting the crown of thorns on his head. And it's not ordinary thorns that we have on roses. It's big old things like nails that 
pierce this blood vessel. Laughing at him. And then they stripped his back. All that he went through. And that's why. And then going down to hell for us in our place. And we're going to say God understands why it's okay for me to suppress the truth. And demand that others agree with my lie. And demand that my lies be legal? No, he doesn't understand. And it's best you understand that now and get it fixed before it's too late. Because any moment you can stand before him. We saw that in 2020, how many people went before him fast. He's coming soon. He's coming soon for those who've been living like royal citizens, who've been living like sons, who've been living like his servants, his slaves, who are pleased to dwell with him and who have his nature because he lives in them. The kingdom lives in them. The Holy Spirit lives in them. So I want to conclude. Oh, there's so much. You're going to have to catch it. I can teach it to you, but until you catch it, until you go, oh, ah, like the kids say when I teach them and they finally get it. Oh, like one of them told me today when I showed him what to do with the math. He said, that's it? You mean to tell me it's that easy? Yes, it's that easy. It's that easy because God did all the hard for us. So we've surrendered all our rights. When we come through the door, Jesus, into the kingdom of God, because we believe what Jesus did by his blood. And when we come into that kingdom, the kingdom comes into us. And we come under the rule of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who takes good care of his children. Our behaviors, our lifestyle reflects the God we serve. So which God are you truly serving? Do you know? Are you serving a mixture? Listen, there is no dual citizenship in the kingdom of God. You either are in or not. The sad part is, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, t I think I'll talk about that Sunday. He says, let the wheat and the tear grow together until that last day. You don't want to be a tear. You don't want to be the one who's going to get thrown out of the kingdom because you refuse to abide by the kingdom principles. And again, I want to encourage you, find out what it means to live in a kingdom ruled by a king. It's not a democracy. It's not a socialist, nor a communist, nor a republic. It is not. The king is in charge, period. Everything else bows to him. He's in charge. So next week, we'll continue talking about this, and I'll talk about the principles I put some links to Maz Monroe. When I go home, I'll drop it in the description. I also put some links to Pedro Adeo, Kingdom Seekers. Oh, I mean, just listening to him, his calls every day about the kingdom and how we should live. It's just amazing. So I want to encourage you. Lydia, I just want to encourage you today. Be encouraged. God's got your number. I want to give a word to a couple of people before I finish. I've got Ava. Ava. And 
Creepy, Trulis, Gloria, Tweety, and Julia. And Father, what do you want to say to your children? What do you want to say? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Creepy, it's no more. It's no more funny, nor cute. The name that you're called by, because Jesus said everything he does can be sheltered from the rooftop. You don't put your light under a bushel, he said. So we don't creep around. So, creepy, like Jesus changed the name of some of his disciples. Like Simon, he called him Petra, Peter. You need to change your name and have them stop calling you creepy and instead call you son of the living God. Son of the King of Kings and the Lords of Lords. Because every time they call you creepy, they're forcing a nature upon you that you are not. Truly. God said that you're a bright and shining star in his kingdom. And he said things have been getting tight because the people around you, truly, that you expect to understand where you're coming from and to walk with you, you're like, oh my gosh, am I going crazy? Has something happened to me? No, 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 no. Nothing has happened to you. Trulis, you just keep going into God's word, watching Jesus. If somebody preaches you something, you go and check it out. Don't run with it. You go to the Bible. You ask the Holy Spirit to give you enlightenment, Trulis, and you keep doing what God has called you to do because he says you are his beloved and he's pleased with you. Gloria, as your name is, God said, so are you. He says, you're my glory. You're my glorious kingdom. And he says, Gloria, there's a call on your life. He said, if you look at the Old Testament, the Old Testament was a shadow of what was to come. From Moses, the first five books, it showed you how to live in the kingdom. When Jesus came, all the rituals were done away with, but not the laws of how to live. And then after those first five books, the, 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 the prophets, all the way to Malachi, showed us Jesus, the one who is to come, the king who's to come, the everlasting king. But it also showed us how to live as kings and queens. I said it, yes, Gloria, I said it, kings and queens, because we see marvelous queens. One of the, the, the greatest, I think, was Esther. And why Esther? I'm telling you, the whole Jewish nation would have been wiped out if it weren't for Esther. And it's important that the Jewish nation wasn't wiped out because, see, God preserved a, a, a nation to, so we can see, watch them, how God interacted with them, but more than ever, one that Jesus was going to come through. They had to be preserved, and that's what Esther did. And she was a woman. There's Deborah, a judge. So there are women who ruled and reigned also, Gloria. But watch Jesus more than ever. And Tweety, 
I hear sing like a bird. I don't know if you're a songbird, you're a worshiper. God says he wants to give you downloads, but you're not going to be able to recognize it unless you understand what his word says, unless you understand what he, under, what he says about the kingdom. So he says you have to go into the manual and begin to study from Matthew with the Holy Spirit. Get you a journal, get you pencil and paper. And you begin to study and watch. And he's going to give you downloads of songs. Songs. And this is not the purpose, but it will end up making you a millionaire. So you can have monies to do the things he wants you to do, Tweety. Julia, God loves you. I hear dance. I hear dance. You just be the best that you can be in the dance. Dance? Ze Zephaniah says God dance and rejoices over us. We see David dancing even out of his clothes in worship of God. There's nothing wrong in dance. It's how we use it. It's who we use to serve. So Julia, serve your Lord in your dance and perfect it. And Ava, I left you for last because I, I, I couldn't hear anything for you. Maybe Ava. Two women come to my mind as I'm thinking of Ava. I'm thinking of, um, oh boy, I could see her. Uh, the one who... Why can't I think of her name? Who who did so much good works as a as a Catholic nun for so many? And I'm also thinking of 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 even Jesus' mother. And God said He's got a a job for you. I don't know if he, he's going to use you as a mother, as a spiritual mother, to raise up, to raise up young women who need to hear the truth. Stop, they're being patted and, and encouraged to just be lawless and wicked and forget what the manual says that the older women are supposed to teach them how not to gossip how not to be busy bodies, how to be good wives and mothers. And Ava, that's where I'm going with you. That's what I hear for you. So I want to encourage you today. Seek God's face. My cousin June, I love you. I thank you for just pressing on. You just be encouraged. God's got a job for you yet. You and your beautiful tribe, your children. So just be encouraged, my, my sweet cousin. Be encouraged. God loves you. And he's got a job for you. You are one who is hospitable. You, you like to do things for people. It, it reminds me, I fell asleep when I was doing my Bible study, June, in, in the chair for just for a few minutes, you know how you fall asleep and you wake up? But in that brief sleep, June, I saw glasses. And these glasses were heart-shaped. And they had rhinestones around them, white rhinestones. And when I woke up, I was like, what in the world? It was so clear. And God said, when you look at people, you need to see them through love. But you also, the rhinestones are value. You need to see their value. And June, you love to do things for people. God gave you that gift. God gave you that gift. And in the days to come, he's going to start showing you how you can truly 
see people with eyes of love and value and do things for them that he asks you to do. But it's not going to be because they're glad or they're happy. It's going to be because God is glad and God is happy that you did it. And he's going to reward you for obeying him, for being obedient to him. Like he told me to give somebody a gift. This person is mean to me. But you know, as I studied my Bible that day, there I saw it. Give a gift in secret. Love your enemies. And so I did what he said and apologized for arguing with him. So I want to encourage you, June. It's no, it's no strange thing that you are a given person and you like to do things and like to, to, to cook for people. But let God show you how to do it because people can wear you out and people can be ungrateful. You don't want to do it for the sake of people and for people to like you or to say thanks because sometimes they don't. But you let God, let God give you the rewards. Girl, the rewards are plenty. They're going to bless those little grandbabies. They are so adorable. And you want to see them raising higher and higher and higher than you. I decree over you, should the Lord tarry, those young people be millionaires legally. Because God give them downloads. Because June, you obey him. Because you obey what he said to do. He downloads these witty inventions. I was looking at videos about... The, the inventions that the black people made. And I decree over your kids, your little grandkids, witty inventions from the Lord. Amen? God bless you, bless you, bless you. I love you, all of you. Lydia, I love you. Be encouraged. And you speak life over yourself, June, because there's life in you for years to come. Amen? I love you. Be blessed. I'll talk with you Sunday. Bye-bye.